Stuff that we uh, should talk about still that it's, uh, we're still missing is mount notifications. That's a big thing that uh, was in David's uh, original patch set. Uh, we had a session about this last year, but so far uh, things didn't happen. And I would like to see this done within this year, ideally, so that we can cross this off the list. We got stat mount, we got list mount already. Um, file system specific mount, option retrieval, uh, unlikely that we will cover both of these items. Um, directly mounting a subdirectory, uh, L isn't here, doesn't, it's probably also not that important, uh, but it's essentially what ButterFS always had. If you specify a subvolume, then that subvolume becomes the root of your uh, of your mount, uh, and uh, it would be nice if we had a generic way of actually uh, doing this for all uh, file systems, and it's a problem that can be solved in the in the VFS, I think, pretty easily. Um, UID and GID squashing. This came up uh, related to a very weird patch set that we recently received, which essentially just means that, similar to uh, NFS root squash, that you have a range of IDs that you map down to a single ID. Uh, the semantics for this would be a bit involved, but it would help use cases, for example, when you share, a, you, you share a certain data set with a container and you only want that container to be able to write to this thing under a specific UID but have access to all the files, so then you have this UID squashing mechanism. Um, this is uh, a fallout of having user namespaces, as Joseph likes to complain about, so we have to deal with this. Um, and mount attribute changes during mount propagation, uh, although that's, I don't think that's that an important topic, but the general idea is um, currently if you uh, uh, let's say you have one writable mount correct me if I'm if I'm wrong and you have uh, a bunch of services that have a read-only mount tree um, so you create that mount it propagates and it propagates with the same sort of uh, mount options on all the nodes in the propagation tree uh, meaning they don't become read-only so you suddenly expose read writable uh, writable mounts to uh, workloads that were supposed to only have uh, read-only mounts um, this is kind of an ugly problem and I'm not sure if this is something that we actually want to solve but it's one thing that has been uh, requested um, I've chosen to focus on this topic again because I think this is the most um, pressing and interesting issue for uh, user space and I sort of tried to summarize what we uh, agreed on or what we discussed last year um, and we can see if we're all still on the uh, on the same page um, so I rewatched the session yesterday um, we explored the possibility to use Fenotify for this, right? For uh, mount notifications. Uh, this is in contrast to what uh, David did, and correct me if I'm saying anything that's wrong. Uh, David implemented watch queues in the kernel. That's still. Uh it didn't use FSinfo to, to apply the watch. There was actually a watch mount system call. You had a separate system call for this. FS info you used to find out the uh, the, the things that changed. Counters. Yeah. Okay. And also to find out the, the structure. Uh, but you implemented this on top of watch queues, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, the reason why for notify uh, was chosen that it provides a lot of the uh, uh, had a lot of desirable properties uh, such as missed event notifications. Uh, when the queue overruns, which is an issue that we're going to have to deal with because we have, uh, uh, I don't know, probably uh, Joseph is likely someone who has experienced this recently from what I understand, the workloads that uh, you run when you uh, have massive amounts of mount propagation events or mount events uh, when you do containers, you can easily end up with, if you have a large propagation tree, I don't know, 10,000 mounts uh, that get propagated all across the tree, uh, and these, you would all get notified about these mounts, so you need to consume them very quickly, otherwise you get an overrun uh, on the queue. Now, the overrun is not a problem anymore, I think. Um, this was an issue last year. Um, <clears throat> what we can do with the FNotify, I don't know if we will, because we did the same for just file system notifications, that you, we could decide to allow the API to, dis, uh, to determine which information you get in the events. So then if you only want to know, like Leonard said it, let me know when something's changed. So then you get a thousand messages saying something's changed under this mount, with mount on D of the parent, yes. then it's all uh, coalesced to a single message. 
when yes. you read it. Yes, and that works. That's why I wanted to say that this problem is somewhat solved now because we have 64-bit mount ID. So if you send out the 64-bit mount ID to user space, then user space can use list mount to query for the direct children of the mount. Yeah. So you can find out what mounts you missed. Yeah, but it's still a user space decision whether or not yeah, yeah, you would yeah, yeah. want to get sure. the child mount ID in the message. Um, sure. But yeah, we can we can do both. If yes, needed, yes, yes. Uh, that's totally fine. What information is exposed, uh, user space can can opt into this. What they want. I have a uh, point about this as well. An opt-in way of getting a, either an OPATH FD or a file handle uh, um, to the mount uh, together with the event. We 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 yeah we prefer yeah. to provide the file handles. The file handle is perfect because I thought about uh, an OPA FFD essentially allows you to uh, uh, open up any uh, mount on the system, uh, so it wouldn't need to be an extremely privileged uh, interface. No, uh, no and need. with a file handle, you can get around this problem uh -huh. because you need to ca call uh, open by handle at, and also I have a. I'm pretty sure we can relax the permissions for CapDAC research on. Um, on file handles, on open by handle at, uh, if we, uh, yeah, uh, at least for when you just want to open uh, the mount itself, not files uh, beneath the mount, because then we can uh, check for CapTech research on the owning user namespace of the mount, and we have that information. I'm all for that. You, you're the one that has to prove that it's working correctly. <laughs> Permission for checking, yeah. For me, I mean, like I like I love the file handle thing, but like the cap uh, research thing is like a real problem for me, right? Because like you know, I want to be able to use some of these mechanisms inside of the container. Yes. And I want to be able to like, yep. and especially if like I I know I own the file handle, like so, I know I have access to it inside yep. the container. So the way open by handle that uh, currently works. Um, you get a mount DRFD, uh, um, and uh, this mount DRFD uh, you can use get VFS mount, and this gets you the struct mount that belongs to this FD. And from mount you can get to uh, the mount namespace, and from the mount namespace to uh, the user namespace. And if you want to open that mount, what you're really interested in um, is would you essentially would you have had the ability to open that mount uh, at the time this thing was created? It is similar to the link at problem. And the way you usually solve that is you check the credentials against uh, the opener, for example, or in this case, against uh, the mount FD, that the mount DRFD that was provided to you. I think that should be enough. And in that case, you have an NS capable check, which means it works in containers as well. What you want to guard against is that you relax the restrictions from uh, to just user NS capable, because that means if, if uh, I uh, get a file handle, and uh, uh, this is an NS capable check, so against my current namespace, I can just unshare user namespace and mount namespace, and then I have that capability in my namespace, and so therefore I can open any file. Uh, and this sort of has the open ID permission uh, 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 or in the object at the time it was created as a way to get around this. And I think we, that's exactly how we can solve the uh, open by handle at problem. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Just one other thing about the API for FNF to find. We do need to decide which, ob which obje objects yes. we'd want to watch, like a parent mount, obviously. But do we also want sort of a global watch? So do we the need anything more? The discussion last year uh, uh, was what being and what David's patch set uh, does did is you can watch a whole mount namespace for mount changes, and I think that is desirable for. You actually can set the watch on any, any subtree. You can yes. See. So it could be the entire mount namespace, or it there could be any subset thereof. We likely need both mount namespace and per mount point watches or uh, uh, sub uh, subtree watches. I think uh, you need both because I think you last year also said that uh, sub subtree watches is what you want because you have use cases. There are use cases where you want to watch all mounts happening in a container, for example, obviously. So that's why you want to watch on the mount namespace. But then you have services that might only use a subtree and uh, not use, for example, a mount namespace. So for those use cases, you want to be able to say, I want to get notifications about the subtree. So I think in the end, we have to support both. I'm not really sure how 
to do the sub tree watch. Uh, I think there was a uh, there was an issue that was pointed out by you last year that uh, it would be racy because uh, new mounts that appear in the sub tree would need to inherit the watch. So you need to put a watch on that mount. In that time, it would be possible that other mounts already appeared on that mount. Yes, and uh, so. I'm not sure the raciness matters as long as you have a way to find out again what mounts happened, what mounts exactly happened. So if you can call list mount on a new mount and see the child mounts, you can catch up essentially is my point. You can yeah, but user space can do all of that with just watching a parent mount. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't know if I notify enough to uh, say something about this. Is this a recursive watch? So if I notify currently it doesn't have any kind of recursive watching care. Yeah? Okay, you can watch like the object and basically you get notification about immediate children. And uh, so as Amer said, you know, with this you can reasonably implement the recursive watch in the user space, but it's a bit pain. Uh, but but you can like watch the parent, you know, when you learn about new children, then you place the watch there, and then you call list mount to find out what has happened before you were able to place the watch, and yeah, from repeat at infinitum. <laughs> uh, so 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 this way this way you can re implement the recursive watches yourself. Uh, Uh, alternative is the namespace watch, where you would be basically getting, you would be placing it in some way on the namespace, which currently we don't have, but we would have to like create new object type for this. But uh, but then then you would be getting basically everything what's happening in yep. the namespace, I pre presumably. Yeah, the way I did it was to place a list of watches on the namespace, but they're tagged to a particular mount and directory pair so you in the namespace and wh when an event happens it walks up the tree you can filter yeah, okay. and any watches that it encounters on the way yeah it, it trips yeah that sounds fine yeah so, so we can do this but it's kind of you know it doesn't really it's yeah yeah Move mount isn't a problem because it just produces two notifications, one for where it's going from and one yep. Yes, well, it works. Well, the way I did it works. You just tell it to back, tell them about the base and you need to generate two notifications. One for the place it's going from and one for the place it's going to. And if it's moving outside the tree they can see, they only get one or other of the notifications. because they may only be able to see a subset because of a uh, droot. need to think about it, I don't know. I need to look at it in details. Yeah. Uh, and uh, performance measurements. I mean, the whole point of this uh, exercise that we're doing is, uh, is it faster than uh, watching proc self mount, proc watching and passing proc self mount uh, info question mark? I'm pretty sure that it is, but we should have some numbers around, uh, around this and how much it actually uh, um, improves things. And possibly some tests on, uh, for some extreme cases, like when you have really, really large mount tables and you get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, notifications uh, for this, um, that would be uh, that would be pretty good. So I think this is something that we should do uh, that we should aim to get done this year, um, because it's been such a long, long-standing problem that uh, it's kind of a shame that we didn't manage to actually solve this yet, and uh, with all of the uh, uh, container workloads and their insane mount tables, uh, it's kind of necessary that we provide an uh, API for this. Are there any more comments on this? Yes? Tell me about it. No, no, we should talk about it, yeah. Uh, uh, whether that's possible or not.
So uh, just I'm thinking of that. I think our problem with uh, recursive uh, watches for file system was mainly performance. That we didn't want to walk back all directories for every uh, read event, but for mount and mount, I think yeah, it should be fine to walk back the tree. I mean, no, our problem with recursive uh, notification in general was you could have notification for read, and you don't want for every read to work back a, a tree to find out whether there's a, a watch on a subtree. But for mount and, mount and move mount event, I don't think it's an issue. Uh, we can do that. Yeah, but I think so. In principle, yes, I agree that the performance is not such a concern here, uh, that we could walk up the tree. Uh, Modulo interesting issues that it can be racing with other modifications of the tree possibly, but uh, like I'm more concerned about finding some let's say consistent way how to hook this functionality into like FA notify API so that we don't create complete mess out of it because in principle people want this for like regular files and directories as well mm. and eventually we like can imagine that we will be expanding API for uh, to support this functionality for regular files and APIs so we should come up with some like consistent story for this if we are going to implement this Actually, I misremembered slightly how I implemented it. I put the list of watches not on the namespace, but on the mount object. So as on I'm struct going, mount. Yeah. So, uh, so as I, I'm going up the tree, I just check the list on each mount object. If there's nothing on it, I just skip to the root of that mount and proceed to the next one. So it's actually pretty quick just to walk up the tree. And, and uh, we, we, but you have to keep an eye on what, the, So what happens if you do a pivot route? That's taken care of. You stop at the, the, the route of... Uh, so no, the, the thing that I'm uh, trying to get at is uh, you, you have a specific route mount. That is the route of your uh, struct FS, for example. Yeah. Uh, and then in, in a container, you sometimes you have uh, this, th you place a watch on that, and then somebody in that container does a pivot route. So it, they, yeah. they switch out the mount so that the, it yeah. would be lost, right? The oh, no. It, so, do you so basically, do you copy the list of watches when you copy a mount? No. Okay. You, the, the, mount, the, the watches you've in place are attached to that mount object. Object. If you copy them out, the watches don't go with it. Okay, so that would mean if that. If you copy it into yeah, somewhere the, you're the, watching, the, you'll still see it. The point that I was getting at is that if you pivot root, uh, you would lose the watch on the namespace essentially. Yes. But if it oh, goes we can fix that. Your, I mean, if, we, it we, goes, if, you, if you rotate it outside of your tree, yeah. then you don't see things from that anymore. So, to re they essentially, if you want to pivot replace your root of S, you pivot yeah. root, you have the old mount yeah. uh, stacked on top of it that has the uh, fan notify notifications on top of it. Then you unmount it to reveal the underlying uh, new root for your, uh, for your namespace, then all the watches are gone. If, if they're attached to the thing you unmounted, then yes. Yes. Because you said you're not attached it to a namespace, you attached it to a mount always, yes? Okay. Yes. I mean, that's it's a problem we can solve. I'm just trying to remember that this yeah, is a problem we need to keep in mind. It's okay. if they're attached to the mount object, because then you don't have to troll the, it's the list attached to the namespace each time you, you go up a directory. Is there any performance concern about, like, I know, mounting or mounting many, time, many things? Is that is there performance con performance concern about it? Because I mean, start walking back the mount tree for every mount and mount. Is that a problem? Do you think it's a problem? Well, I, 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 set, I set a flag on the namespace to say there are actually watches in here. So if there are no watches, it, it just skips all of that. It should also be pretty fast. In these situations, like similar thing that we, I, I did s similar optimizations for uh, for notify or I notify, like says whether there's any watch on this file system. Yeah, if there's nothing, do nothing. But if system D is present in the system, there will be a watch. So this optimization is useless in in real life. But. Uh,
when I'm walking up the tree, I can, if I can go up a whole uh, time, if there are no watches on it, I can mm. just skip any mount object that has no watches. Walking, uh, walking mounts should also be pretty quick. It's all. Yeah. Uh, it's only when you uh, yeah, when you alter the mount all table. The, mount then the depth of the mount tree. The, in the case. The if, big if the mount object has watches on it. I'm going to have to walk all the directions in the path going back yes. up anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying we. I don't think we. The prob It would be a problem if you would not need to take something like namespace lock or a, a mount hash lock, which you don't need. You don't need that. Just yeah, you don't need. It. It's very fast to walk it yeah. in. Just need in to prepare fact, to detect we're holding it. The I think pretty soon the namespace lock is held anyway because we're doing a mount. Yeah. Or no mount. And with I think nowadays I'm ho hopefully I'm remembering it correctly. I, nowadays walking a mount table uh, is also faster or nicer because we uh, we have an RB tree. Don't tell Matthew that. Uh, uh, well, all I do is follow the mount parent. Huh. I only need to follow the mount parent pointer to the yeah. parent, parent, parent going to all rootwards along the tree. Yes, but if you, for example, want to get to all child mounts or something, that is now trivially doable as oh, well. You yeah. don't need to do that when walking When the you tree. walk up. No, that's only yep. for like this mount or whatever. Yes. So are the Fanodify maintainers going to implement this or do we need to do this? Well. <coughs> you have the means to nag. What? You have the means to nag, don't afraid to use them, and then... Now I can make a, uh, I can take a step at the, uh, uh, at the basic implementation uh, of this. Uh, it's just that we... It's a problem that I want to see solved. Yeah, as, as Jean said, we need to figure out a, a good story for yeah, the yeah. API. Once we pass that, um, whoever has time can implement, but uh, it's not going to be very hard to implement, I think. You can always steal my the code I wrote for walking up the tree and mm -hmm. generating notifications. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, I think we're almost uh, we're almost out of time. But uh, if we don't get to it this year, I don't know if Miklos intends to work on this or not. Uh, but definitely uh, next year we need to talk about file system specific mount option. Uh, I have a concrete uh, suggestion. I think we should. If start it's the Xadder API, no, I'm no, no. Going I think we should start here. for FA Notify. I think we should start with the least controversial uh, API, like watch a parent mount for children. The um, and if there's an agreement about this, it shouldn't be hard to implement, and then someone else can take it to different directions uh, if needed. Okay, I think we're at time.